I'm David Barnsworth, and I'll be performing the third movement, which is the cadenza of Shostakovich's first cello concerto in E flat major.
fireworks and sound beautiful. It's wonderful. I especially appreciate how wonderful it is, considering the fact that they've been just us to play about two hours ago. It's very short noise. Bravo, bravo. It's wonderful. Well, there's a couple of things which I would like to discuss with you on the uh, structure, right? Yeah. And which is related to uh, very much to the use of the time throughout the piece, through the movement, and, 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 and use of robotic, yeah. and use of pulse. Because I think there is no robotic in music which is not coming out of sense of pulse. And sometimes it feels that it's, it's many moments in the cadenza your pulse comes out of rubata. Mm -hmm. You know okay. what I mean? Gotcha. So rubata is a deviation from, 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 from order of the pulse, right? Right. I'm just bringing some order into otherwise chaos. <laughs> yes. So I think okay. it's, what's absolutely fascinating about this cadenza, it's not just a cadenza, it's a movement in itself, which is, do we know any other early cello concerto which has a whole movement given to us. No, nothing, right? It's, 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 it's a relative novelty in, in, in the cello literature at that time, 1959 it was written. So, and because of that, because actually not just a cadenza, but it's a tightly constructed movement, everything was happening there is a very, very interesting way how the Shostakovich develops his idea and it's always developed materially, the same way it would be made Beethoven. And in order, I think, to trace that and show that development, we need to remind ourselves what was the pulse of the, each material we about to introduce. Because what's happening right now some of your gestures are, oh, first of all, everything is very beautiful and quite expressive, but many of those, uh, many of your gestures are lacking sense of direction. And the first thing which comes to mind, we need to remind ourselves, what well, actually is the motion of that particular material when you introduced it in the previous moment? So when you start, <coughs> Where this music comes from? Um, it feels like it's um, like a. I mean, just the notes of it itself are kind of feel like the first movement's notes, but the style comes from the second movement. I mean, this is basically the, the same music as in the second movement, which you play here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have known that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the first time you played here. Yeah, right. But it's actually introduced to you by the orchestra, which plays the whole tutti before you come in. Second, you hear all right? Um, yeah, it's basically main theme of the second movement. They have right? that theme that the cellist doesn't play, right? Mm -hmm. They have that. That's a street field. playing in the, yeah. in the opening. It's 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 a violence playing the top voice. Yeah. But that's. I think it would be easier to draw this connection, even though you play it half step lower here. If you would have in mind what was happening before, and of course it's the thing is that, well, remind me, what's your tempo uh, for that movement? Yeah. And that's the closest relative is right here. 
is it is a cadence so it's just a little longer freedom of play. So but if you play it twice slower, it's really hard to recognize the material. Yeah, it is. Yeah? Can I give it a go? Yes. Don't relax yourself. Keep the intensity. 
this way, right. there will always will be continuity of the cell and the continuity of the gesture. You see, you're beating up, right? Yeah. And that's already set the staccato spontaneous feeling. Try to beat this way. So you pull the strings inside. Oh, okay. So it's like a twisting motion. Twisting motion, yeah. Got just way the strings will be pulled uh, horizontally, not this way. Otherwise, you're in danger of playing bar. Oh, 
thumb tube is better than what I was doing. Thank you. 
the guitar pick, which is quite, it's flexible, but it's very strong. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bend completely. Was I sort of doing this sort of thing? Yes, I think you're playing with flat fingers, okay. a little bit this way, when you can... Uh,
what you're losing right now is sense of the uh, continuity of the phrase because it's all affected by double stops. Yeah. So I would highly suggest to sustain the sounds from the phrase with much, much more uh, clarity. So.
If we look at the pedantic, that's a climax. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. Exactly, you 
pitch. So let's say this one you pitch here, this one you pitch here, because it brings terrible difference. Otherwise, if you just play, play soft here, that would work well. Yeah. Yeah. Try. Yeah, it's over time. Okay. Thank you. 
sure we don't get any. Bravo. Thank you. Uh, first thing which I wanted to, to discuss with you is what is of main interest for you in this period? Um, The character, I think, it's okay. Just, it's very bright. It's very open. It's mm -hmm. very, um, you know, compared to Sweet Five, this feels sort of like, a, like an, an arrival. It's very, it's very bright, sort of in comparison to the end of Sweet. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of our cello version of the Christmas Oratorio, right? It's so exciting, and it's it's almost like when we start playing it. It's, it's, one can hear the trumpets of the Christmas Oratorio. Yeah? So this amazing brightness, joyfulness, excitement. Yeah. And the cello is a bunch of Christmas bells on you know, church towers, right? Now, I, I totally agree with, with, with what you said. I would like to know how are we achieving that and what makes the character so vivid. Because for me, this was not always clear. Mm -hmm. So tell me what makes the character so bright and joyful and ecstatic. Um, I think the dance character and the pulse, it sort of reminds me of the Jean from Sweet One. The da -da 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 so like the, it's like a, the pulse, I think. Well, this one is in four, the Jean is in two. Mm -hmm. It's the yap, 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 The dream with motion, yes. So there's that, I agree. But how much of the character can be achieved by underlining the articulation up there? Mm -hmm. Because what's happening right now is there's lots of good, well-played vowels, and what I think is missing, missing is, is springiness in, in the pulsation of the moving notes on the top voice, because it, everything becomes very equal. And I think this is a, a pedal point, right? A, So we have a And that's, I think, that tension needs to be released. 
that will allow you to have a much more clear concert in front of the sound. So, while the bow is being very articulated when necessary, that part of the arm should work as a pendulum and a relaxed one. And what I see that this is locked, and it is out, you can hang out only here. Yeah, and there's no sense of release, both in sound and in, in, in the vocal and the melody. Yeah, let's try to, to do one slice lower. And what I want you to do is to feel that you ground the all the weight in the string in front on the first note. Then, then you have a sense of release. much better articulated and will be much more comfortable if 